It's not about motivation. When is need discipline? Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. There's a few in this room and a few in the industry that feared we might never see these two in a professional ring after what happened with the mandated purse bids last April or 12 months later. Everybody is here and we're locked and loaded and ready to go. And we are talking heavy artillery. These are two big, punching, big men in their own rights, both fiercely confident. I am going to go straight to the fighters because, after all, that is why we are here. We, we want to hear from these two protagonists. Fraser Clark, I will come to you first as the challenger. You were confident at the first press conference. Now you've had a full camp. Are you as confident or even more confident that those belts are going to be switching from that side of the table to this side? Of course, um, even more confident. You know, I think the work that you do in the camp just breeds confidence week after week after week. And now we're here and um, yeah, I feel fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. What's the big difference between you and him? I just think I'm the better boxer. I mean, yeah, we, we've run this narrative over and over again that Fabio is this, this massive puncher, which, you know, it's quite clear that he is. Um, he's a great fighter. There's, there's no doubt about it. You know, he's done fantastic. But, you know, we're going into a boxing match, a fight, and I think I do it better than him. Boxing has shown us, though, that the best boxer doesn't always win. If you have to be the fighter, can you do that as well? Of course. This is, um, this is something that's not new to me. You know, I've had many battles in my life, um, in boxing, out of boxing, that have, have prepared me for moments like this. Um, a tough tough amateur career as we know and um, not so many lessons as a pro yet but I feel like you know during all them years all over the world different people in front of me different sparring partners different opponents you pick up a thing or two along the way you know and I feel, feel like it's prepared me well for this moment I think you're, you're a realist and he's played a great game of trying to get under your skin and I think at times he has been there have you made your peace? Are you focused now on fight night? Is there anything you can say or do today that can change your mentality or get under your skin? There's no doubt about it. He's very annoying at times and um, he plays it very well. You know, he's clever in that respect. Um, and I have to take my hat off to him. You know, like I say, not just him, but me as well. We both feel like we both sold this fight very well. Um, it's going to be a massive clash. But at this moment in time, there's, there's nothing he can say or do that, that can get under my skin or bother me. Um, I'm a professional and I'm fully focused now on my job. I've had big moments in my life and my career along the way and this is just another one of them. Do you believe that he believes in what he's saying there? Yeah, I believe that he believes it. Um, whether he's able to execute on it, whether that's the outcome on the night is a different question entirely. I'll ask you the same question. You were confident when the fight was made. Are you as confident or even more confident now you've had however many weeks that was? I think nine weeks. Yeah, I'm just as confident as I was before the fight was made and before we even got to getting everything sorted and, and really ticked off. Even the first time around, I wanted the fight and, and wanted to give it on. So even since then, I've had bigger fights, been in bigger matches, bigger tests, and I've only developed as a boxer and as a fighter. I've only got better. That's all you've seen for me. It's just consistent improvement. So it's even better for me now that it's coming at this stage. How much have you enjoyed... Uh, the whole experience of winding him up. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he doesn't take it too personally. It's, um, it's something I do with everyone. Like my own team, even, I'll wind them up all the same. Look, it's, it's all fun and games. It's not for anyone else, it's for me. It's my general character. I like to have a bit of fun with it. I like to enjoy, enjoy these moments, enjoy the time, and enjoy being here and, and soaking up the event. So I enjoy having a poke and prod at anyone that's around. Do you believe that you do knock him out on Sunday night and if so, can you just give us a little bit of an insight into how you plan on carrying that out? <laughs> By any means necessary is the, is the objective. Look, it, it may come early, it may come late, irrelevant, it's going to come. That's the, only, that's the only definite tick of the box is that it is going to come. It doesn't matter what stage of the fight, it doesn't matter how the fight's going, 12th round, first round, whenever. You see my fights, they're always entertaining. I'm always looking for big shots. I'm always looking to put a show on and get my opponent out of there. And Sunday night will be no different. What do you expect him to do? I do expect him to try and box me. I think there's this... I think there's an obvious conception that, yeah, he's the boxer and I'm the fighter. And 
if I'm going to win, then I have to drag him into like deep waters or drag him into a fight with me and he has to outbox me. But I proved very clearly in my last fight that if I want to outbox someone, I can. And, and if I want to finish you off when I choose, I can do that as well. So the, I think this fight is in my hands. It's up to me and decide how I want to go about it, how, if I want to box it or if I want to fight it. What's your response to that? Can you be outboxed by him in your mind? I don't believe so. Um, I believe he definitely has an advantage, you know, with the people he's got around him. The team, obviously, we know um, he trains with Ben Davidson and that stable, and we see fantastic things coming from them, in the, you know, at the minute in, in boxing. They're doing really well, so I believe that's definitely added to him. Whether it's enough for him to outbox me, I think that's, that's a bit strong. Um, but of course, he'll pose threats in there. You know, he's a dangerous man, 100%, but, you know, I don't know if they've... I don't know if him or, or the team or what have, have got this in the head that, that I'm not dangerous because um, I know what I can do and, and there's people around him that have also seen me you know, fight over the years and, and they also know what I can do. Is that not a good place to be though from, uh, in terms of your mentality? Bookmakers have got you as the underdog and if you think people are looking past you, is that not a good place to be? It's a great place to be. Everyone's got me as an underdog. Um, I look around this room, I see lots of, lots of data. As I say, lots of people that have, have chose Fabio and... Um, you know, that's their prerogative. But I believe in myself and um, I am the British title and Commonwealth title challenger. I've lived like a challenger and I've trained like a challenger and how a challenger should. I have no objective other than taking them titles back with me on Sunday. I haven't looked, for, I haven't looked past it, nothing at all. I'm focused on beating the man in front of me and, and that's Fabio Wardley. I asked you the question yesterday, but not everybody would have seen it. Um... You probably made a few enemies in Ipswich when you two decided to uh, do what you did at halftime, but you probably made a few fans in Norwich. Is that fair to say? No, if you want to check my DMs, it's just, it's just people from Ipswich threatening to give me a good, a good boot in, whatever that is. Um, they're, they're Fabio's burner yeah. accounts. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, all, it's all me. It's all me. I've got about 18 different accounts. Some crazy, uh, some crazy guy last night. Um, I don't even know who he was. He looked. He was bizarre. He something to do with alloys. Um, he was having a rant down the uh, down the camera at me. Um, but yeah, I won't be going there uh, anytime soon. Let's put it that way. Uh, uh, and as for the, as for the Norwich fans, up you guys. You know, you they've uh, my new my new army of followers. Uh, but what people need to understand is that like, you know, I played the pantomime villain a little bit. We've seen it over the years in boxing. We've seen it yeah, from the top to the bottom. We're trying to sell a fight, and, and once again, you know, um, I believe we've done that well. And Bank Holiday Sunday is going to be a good one uh, for me, anyway. That was uh, aimed at you as well. You know, the football crowd that you've got, the incredible support we saw it on the pitch. Um, it's probably a, a good pressure. We talk about good pressures and bad pressure. That must be a, a great pressure to to have Ipswich behind you. And I don't know if you've seen the story. Fraser made some friends with a local scaffolding company out on his run. Um, Ipswich <laughs> scaffolding who. Uh, gave him a bit of stick whilst he was out <laughs> running, so you've obviously done a good job there. A bit, a bit of stick? I've never run so fast. Um, yeah, about, about five geezers trying to chase me scaffold poles. There we go. Yeah, look, my, my hometown are great for getting behind one of their own. They, they love and support you. They want to see you do well. And, and even from the early days, even before I was on big stages like this and, and headlining the O2 and whatever, even when I was doing small hall shows and and fighting where there was a couple of hundred people and stuff. They were always, the town itself was always behind me, always supporting me. And it's fantastic that I'm able to bring Ipswich, put it on the map and bring it to a stage, a global stage like Sky, like Boxer. I put it on the main event at the O2 Arena as well. And just kind of, it almost feels like a bit of a give back of like, thank you for them early years of support. And here's our little moment as well. So the O2 Arena on Sunday night is going to be blue and white. I'll give you two a bit of a rest and bring in the wider teams. Ben Shalom first. Public enemy number one uh, actually was you 12 months ago. It's been yep. a long road to get to this point. Now you've got it and the way that the tickets have gone, you must be relieved and a, a little bit vindicated to play the long game. Yeah, I think so. I think both fighters are delighted the way it's worked out. There's not many narratives in boxing that, that cross over and this has captured the imagination of the nation. It's, it's got bigger and bigger and bigger. And now we're here, a couple of days out from the O2, headlining the O2, selling 
tens of oh, 13,000 tickets I think sold so far. It's a huge night for both of them. I think they'll both look back on this fight as the most important fight in their career. I truly believe that. I think it's everything on Sunday and uh, credit to both guys because they've, they've played their part, they've sold the fight, the fans get to see a British heavyweight title fight, probably the biggest in, in recent years. I think back to Anthony Joshua and Dillian White and what that did for their careers and the platform it gave them and they both went on to be pay-per-view stars in their own right. Both these guys have that potential and both these guys are desperate to win on Sunday and uh, yeah, a huge night for British boxing. It's, uh, it's delight. I'm delighted to be part of it. We've had bad blood, uh, albeit some of it tongue-in-cheek, through the build-up. And today, I don't think people should get it twisted. Yeah, there's a hell of a lot of respect between the two. But are you expecting once that first bell that goes, that that respect is out of the, uh, out the window? Yeah, I think so. Look, certainly from, from our side, you know, Fraser's the Olympian. Fraser's the one that has the chance to become the fastest ever British heavyweight champion. I think people forget that. He's moved extremely quickly. He wants to prove a lot of people wrong. Of course, there's respect there. What Fabio's done in the professional ranks, you have to tip your hat. You know, with, with, without the amateur experience, he's got better and better and better. There's so many unknowns in this fight, and anyone trying to predict it can't see the full picture. We've not seen Fraser Clark really tested in the professional game yet. We've not seen, in my opinion, Fabio in there with anyone close to Fraser Clark's ability. It's a, it's a pick and fight. As you said, the rivalry is there, but the respect is there. It's got the narrative, it's got everything, and the atmosphere, I tell you, on Sunday night will be absolutely electric and a perfect advert for the sport. Let's bring in Fabio's manager, uh, Michael Afo, uh, better known as, as, as Magic in the industry. Great to have you up here. How much confidence have you got in your man? And that's, that's kind of a nice little link there that Ben said. It, it does take us back to probably the best British title fight we've had in, in recent years in, in Anthony Joshua and Dillian White when you, you look at the, the similarities between the, the, the two rivalries. Yes, a hundred percent believe Fabio Wardley's going to win. It's up to Fabio uh, how difficult he makes this fight, but the, the winner will be Fabio Wardley. Um, I don't think Fraser Clark has the tools or the mental capacity to to test Fabio Wardley. Um, so Sunday, look forward to a, a victory and look forward to celebrating afterwards and moving on to bigger and better things. The eagle-eyed viewers will have seen you pitch side at Portman Road and, and you were one of the ones shouting, it's too soon for you. Uh, you, soon. You, you. You still believe that it's too soon for, for Fraser Clark? Yes, it's way too soon for Fraser Clark. Um, you know, as an amateur, we all know he was second best to AJ. He was second best to Joe Joyce. And now he's going to be second best to Fabio Wardley. I mean, do you have a response to that? My days of being second best are over, mate. Um, been there, learned from it. There will be no second best come Sunday night. This is your second best heavyweight. I believe I'll probably take out your best heavyweight as well. And who is that? Dylan White, is that who you're hinting yes, at? Yes, sir. Okay, one for the future. You've got to get through Sunday night first off. Exactly. It's, it's, it's very easy to talk when he's not here. Um, he's got a monster to overcome on Sunday night. And um, I'm 100% sure that Fabio's going to dominate this guy. Um, we haven't seen him do anything convincing as a professional. And he can't sit here and lie to the public that he's done amazing things as a professional. The last best performance we've seen him as an amateur, and that was however many years ago. You're only as best as your last performance, as they say. And we saw what Fabio had to overcome and what he'd done on the night. So if, if you're a betting man, go with Fabio Wardley. Are you lying to the public or is that overconfidence on this side? Yeah, of course they're overconfident. Um, they're looking at me as an easy touch. And I think, you know, um, I'm not sure what, what world Mr. Magic lives in. I think he's going to have to give some of that magic to Fabio. But um, Fabio knows this is not going to be easy. Um, it's not a walk in the park. And I 100% know that. I know this is going to be my most difficult fight by a, by a huge margin. This is a guy that's coming in there to win. But I think, um, you know, ultimately, the talking now is done. And, you know, me and Fabio haven't had that much to say. Um, Mr. Magic is having his two minutes of uh, stardom here. So let's applaud him. And uh, me and Fabio did the real talking on Sunday in the ring. Yeah, well, you can finish your talking now if you two want. I'll give you the chance just to give one final message to each other. You don't need me to... He said, she said, you, you talk to each other. What have you got to say? After the champ. Look, a lot of talking's been done. There's not really much to say. Just turn up on Sunday. No excuses. 
let's get in the ring, let's get it on, and, and my hand's getting raised. Ben, that must be music to your ears, just finally. Yeah, what a show. I think final tickets on sale. We go live after Man City Arsenal on Sunday. A huge, huge audience turning into a huge, huge fight. For me, the biggest British card of the year. Two titans, two heavyweights, two unbeaten guys putting it all on the line. No one can call it and see you on Sunday. Yes. Do I not get more? One more, Andy? No? Yeah, yeah, you do. I, just, I just wanted to, first of all, just obviously thank Boxer and, and Sky Sports, you know, for putting this event on. And my last thank you actually goes to, um, to Mr. Fabio Wardy. You know, I think we all need a dance partner, and I believe on Sunday night um, he's going to be mine and he's going to bring the best out of me. So without him, you know, I wouldn't have um, been able to get where I'm at right this second. So um, thank you to the champ. Appreciate it. Well said. So yeah, we're going to break for head to head now. Uh, just a I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals. 